The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. A number of years ago, I was having a conversation with a high school student. We were talking about the questions that had come up in religion class, things like God's providence or how God can know everything. And as we talked, the student, the student suddenly stopped and asked, so are we like God's pets? I laughed a little to myself and I said, no, we are definitely not God's pets. We're his adopted children in Christ. But that student's question is not so far off from our experience, is it? I mean, this way of seeing ourselves like God's pets. Most religions have some kind of belief about creation. And so it's pretty easy for us today, unless we're atheists, to believe that God is the creator and we are creatures. Even atheists have some definite ideas about what it is they say they don't believe in. But is that all there is to our relationship with God? That we believe God is the creator and we are creatures? In other words, that we're not atheists? Or in other words, is there actually something unique about Christian faith? Does Jesus Christ actually make any difference in our relationship with God, the creator? Or... Is Jesus just another historical religious figure among many? And the answer to all of this is what we are celebrating today, Trinity Sunday, which the Catechism tells us is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. I'm not going to attempt a how-it-works explanation of the Trinity. While that may satisfy the curiosity of some, that is not why Jesus revealed to us that God is a trinity. I want to focus instead on why the church says the trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. So what is this central mystery anyways? The mystery of the trinity is the mystery of God's inner life. It's something we can only come to know because God himself has revealed it to us. Imagine if you went into a stranger's house and you saw a bowl of water, a bowl of dog food, and a kennel. What might that tell you about the owner's house? Maybe the owner has a pet dog. Or maybe the owner is dog-sitting for someone else. Or maybe the owner just borrowed these items because they wanted to paint a still-life image. I'm sure you can think of other possibilities as well. But there's simply no way of knowing for sure which one it is unless we meet the owner and they tell us. And that is how it is with God. There are a number of things we can more or less figure out about God just by observing the world God has made, just like going into someone's house. For example, we can reason to the fact that God is one, that God created everything and keeps it in existence, that God is all-knowing. As I pointed out, most religions have figured out these truths about God as well. But, what if? What if, like the owner of that house, God actually came to us and revealed something to us about himself, something we couldn't know for sure by simply observing 
the world he has made, the house that we are in. This was the experience of the people of Israel, which Moses in our first reading was trying to remind them of. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire, as you did, and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation, by testings, by signs, and wonders? Like the owner of that house, God revealed something about himself to the people of Israel when he spoke to them, when he saved them from slavery in Egypt, when he led them through the Red Sea and the desert all those years with signs and wonders. God began a unique relationship with the people of Israel, which at least up until that point in history, God had not done with any other nation. The people of Israel were now no longer just creatures like rocks, trees, animals, or even other human beings, because God revealed himself to them and stepped into their history. The people of Israel were now unique. They were God's people. But then God reveals something even more to us in Jesus. In our second reading today, we hear St. Paul telling us that those who have received the Holy Spirit did not receive a spirit of servile fear, but a spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit, he says, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. In other words, through Jesus Christ, God has revealed something more about himself, something he didn't reveal even to the people of Israel in the Old Testament, that that he is a trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And not only has he revealed this to us about himself, he has invited us to share in that inner life, in that communion of relationships, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he does this by sending the Holy Spirit into our hearts at our baptism, who, as we hear, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so this is why Jesus mentions baptism in today's gospel. Jesus didn't just tell his disciples to teach all nations about the Trinity, but to baptize all nations into the Trinity, to enter into this communion of relationships that is in God. In other words, heaven. Because baptism is more than just a sign of our intellectual or emotional conversion. Baptism is more than just a ceremony to welcome someone new into the Christian community. In baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit who makes us God's adopted children by joining us to and making us members of Jesus Christ. God's only begotten Son. Yes, there are intellectual and emotional moments that lead to this. And yes, being a member of the body of Christ makes us members of the Christian community, the Church. But these things lead to and flow from baptism. But baptism itself is about becoming a child of God, to take our place, as it were, to enter into that communion of relationships in the Trinity. God's own inner life by becoming members of his Son through the pouring of his Spirit into our hearts. So what can we take from all this? First, if this is what baptism really is, becoming a child of God, we should want, we should desire, we should spare no effort to carry out the Lord's command in the gospel to baptize all nations. Baptism is not just about not going to hell. Even if your family has a great insurance policy, hopefully there's more to your family than just sharing an insurance policy. In the same way, there's so much more to being baptized, to being a child of God, to being part of God's family. And we should want to share that with others so that they too can enjoy what we enjoy 
as children of God. Unless, of course, we don't think there's much more to being God's children than an insurance policy. And second, in your prayer this week, maybe take some time to consider just how Christian your view of your relationship with God really is. Hopefully, none of us lives as if God did not exist. But how many of us live as if God had never revealed himself in Jesus Christ? Do we merely see ourselves like God's pets? Or do we see ourselves as part of God's family, a beloved son or daughter in Christ, through the Holy Spirit, who we received in baptism?